can see it in the video. <laughs> you won't believe this plane's at an airfield, do you? So, welcome to my first video of 2019. I've been off for Christmas with the family and ever since I've been back it's been exam season at uni and it's been absolute torture but now Tom's back in his happy place at the airfield and we're going to make a good few videos here in the next few days for you so hopefully there's a good few uploads upcoming on the channel. So today I thought I'd come to the airfield and do a video for you guys about my last year as a pilot. It's been a year since I was issued my license and as I'm pretty sure you've seen on the channel I've had so much fun, so many advan adventures over the last year. So today I just wanted to talk about a few of them. They say getting your pilot's license is your license to learn and I didn't quite understand what that meant when I was first issued it because in my head I would just thought I've been trained in everything I need to do, I'm a certified pilot, I don't see really what else there is to learn. That was a bit naive and at least over the last year I've done a great few things that I've learnt from but obviously nothing too bad. I guess to kickstart it all really would be the near miss I had with the private jet. Now that's probably something that's grabbed most attention on the channel over the last year or so. That was whilst I was training, that wasn't after I got my licence. So. One thing I'm thinking of doing in the future is a dedicated video on the um, near miss I had. So hopefully you'll see that in a future video coming up soon. So first and foremost over the last year is just how lucky I've been to fly with friends and family and just have all the adventures I've had. It's been a great time and I'd like to share that on YouTube with you guys because why would you not share something that's just so fun and not really many people get to see apart from the lucky few. It's actually quite funny because Shelly, the woman who basically runs the flying school, she gets quite annoyed with the um, the amount of passenger forms she gets given because I'm constantly bringing new people up all the time. So it's, it's good fun. Also, I've been lucky enough to meet a few YouTubers who are actually pilots and run their own YouTube channels. I think the first person I ever met was John, which was quite lucky, where we did our channel crossing in his PA28 over to Ostend. So if you've not seen that, go have a look at that and you can see the flight over there on his channel. And then I met Rory from Rory On Air. He um, runs a similar channel to mine. He also flies microlights out of Barton Airfield, which is actually my home airfield, but I'm down in the south at uni, so this is actually where I fly from. Yes, he flies C-42s just like me. He also flies EV-97s which are the Eurostars, which I did start off in my first four lessons of training and I'd be looking at maybe doing a conversion video in the future onto, an, onto a Eurostar, so hopefully that's something I'd look forward to in the future as well. So mainly over the last year, and it's something I've touched upon a few times and I've talked to a few people about, is your radio telephony skills, so basically how you speak on the radio. And it's a bit of a sort of egotistical type thing because as soon as you're licensed and especially whilst you're training, you want to be that really slick talking pilot on the radio who says everything really quick, says it all really precise and sounds cool on the radio and just gets everything said that he wants to say. The main thing I've learned over the year is that you can know all the theory of how to do it. You can know everything about talking on the radio but it's just practice. The jargon is more built into your head and it just becomes more instinct to talk to a controller like a pilot does, but to you it's sort of like a normal conversation whilst you're in the air. So the, the sort of main tips and tricks that were put across to me in, the, uh, um, in training was that you need to know your maydays and your pan calls off by heart easily. You know, you need to know all of it off by heart, really. The trick to knowing what you need to say back, really, is numbers. So whenever you get told a number, normally that has to be given back, except for your wind speed and direction. So things like um, being told runway numbers, um, your Q&H and QFE, things like that. So you have to read those back. You also have to read back specific instructions like being told to hold short and when told to stand by you don't say anything at all and that's what's been point, pointed out to me very specifically in training is that you don't reply to a standby because that means the controller is busy and they need to speak to someone else first 
and by them telling you to stand by and you then saying Roger stand by that's just taking more time out of the grand total of radio calls that has to have to be made in a relatively short period of time because believe it or not aircraft do travel quite fast so sometimes you need to get a message across so that's why you might be told to stand by sometimes so here's some footage of when I first started to get a little bit annoyed with my radio skills wishing I was a bit better and you know you can only improve on it from there so that here's an example of it now so whiskey basic service support four miles to run to join overhead zero three right hand circuit q and h one zero one five uh, basic service report overhead q and h one zero one five runway zero three left up Just runway zero three right hand circuit and report four miles to run. Four miles to run, runway zero three right hand circuit, go. Tell you how to So here's an example of a recent video I made where um, it, for me it was just more instinct to talk about the things I needed to read back, the things I needed to request, etc. So here's an example of that. I see intending through overhead show of airfield three thousand foot and then onto the inland. Roger, report overhead 3000 feet, Shoreham QH is 1014, basic service, and there is one PA28 in the, uh, the Sierra Hotel mic hold above you at 4000 feet. Coffee PA28 above at 4000 feet, QH 1014, basic service, and would you like me to squat? 3763 then. 3763, Golf Echo Delta. So that was a bit better, um, and you know, like I say, it only comes with experience, so. You know, for those people out there who are either training or have just got their license, it just comes with experience. There's no other way to do it. You can learn the theory how to ride a bike, but you're never actually going to be able to unless you actually just get out there and do it. So in my first year flying as well, another thing that was new to me was formation flying. I mainly did it for the RAF 100 video we made, which was a sort of commemoration for the RAF going through its centenary. And we really enjoyed making that and it was a really fun video to make. So the idea was that in that video we um, had an aircraft that intercepted another aircraft but it was kind of a comedy because it's actually it's micro lights, it's not typhoon like it normally would be. So in order to do that video I got in touch with another pilot here at Deanland and he, he, you know, he said he would be up for doing it, he'd be up for flying in formation. So to fly in formation, even though it's perfectly legal to do so as we did, it's sort of an emphasis on the fact that you are a qualified pilot so you are you have proved that you are able to plan and execute a flight safely and in you know in accordance with the law and things like that so the onus was on me and Don who was the guy I flew in formation with to properly sit down and plan our flight and what to do in emergencies and how to go about unexpected situations that we might not have thought about. The way we went about that was we sat down, we sort of got to know each other really because I hadn't spoken to Don much before. So we sat down, had a chat, just got to know each other, understood each other's flying backgrounds and then we started to talk about the motivation for the video we were going to make. So on the channel there is the um, video of the practice we did and then there's the video of the actual day we filmed for the RAF 100 video. Both aircraft couldn't take off on the same runway so we couldn't fly in formation for the whole period of time. One aircraft was going to get airborne and then the other one would so I was the second aircraft to get airborne and we agreed that he was going to fly in an anti-clockwise direction over a visual reference point that we picked at a certain altitude and a certain speed so I knew exactly where he was in the local airspace. Got to about 200 foot below the altitude he was at, just to be safe. And then I approached Allington Reservoir at a slightly greater speed than he was at. So I then spotted him in his counterclockwise turn around the reservoir. So then when I came alongside him, I was 200 foot below, slightly quicker than him. And then I pulled up and that helped to kill off some airspeed and then it was a mixture of power and attitude alterations to stay at the same airspeed and height as him. Dom was the lead aircraft so he would stay, he would fly the flight, he would look out for other aircraft and things like that 
and I would be the person in formation with him. So he was worried about every other aspect of the flight and I was only focused on him. I would keep my eyes fixed on him and then we just move in closer and closer and closer until a point where I was happy where I was but also I wouldn't want to get any closer just in case of any freak turbulence or anything like that. And because it was only two aircraft in formation we both agreed that in an emergency situation we'd call it up over the radio and then we'd both break off in directions separate to each other. And then we'd both be operating our own flights and then return back to the airfield just as normal. And if you want to check out the rest of that video just go and look in the in the upload section of my channel and you'll see it in there. So the last sort of main thing that I learned from was the first time that I did a go around which was a very recent video and I got a few comments saying oh was that your first go around you should have been taught how to do a go around and just to clarify I was taught how to do go arounds what I meant was that that was the first time I've ever actually had to use a go around in a real situation and that was because I was coming in on approach to runway 24 here at Deanland and there was no wind normally if you've got the wind if you're heading into wind your ground speed is lower than your airspeed because you've got the wind acting against you so coming over the hedge the picture just didn't look right so I already pre-briefed myself in my head that if I'm taking off and I'm past the halfway point on the runway and I'm not off the ground I'm going to abort that takeoff and if I'm past halfway on the runway on landing and I've not got the wheels firmly on the ground by then I'm going to I bought the landing and do a go around as well. I see. Look at them, they're running. Yeah. Oh, coming in hot. Coming in. Oh, Thomas. Excuse me. I'm going around. So, in this situation, that's exactly what happened. I was past the abort point, and my wheels did just touch the ground, but it just didn't feel right and I feel like even with some brakes I just have to do a very hard stop to stop by the end of the runway it's always safer to do a go around than it is to really try and force a landing and there's some brilliant videos on YouTube of pilots actually doing that and it just 90% it of the time just doesn't go right so something that was pointed out to me was that using full flaps would have been a better option on that approach because you would have been a lot slower and the descent would have been a lot more controlled and it would have felt a lot better. But what I did on my go around, it was I descended a lot earlier and then I slowed down a lot earlier and then maintained my power balance to just get me over the hedge and then cut it as soon as I'm over the hedge. And then I landed just normally. So that was one learning point as well from my year. And obviously you can get taught things and you can understand them but sometimes it takes a slight mistake and you feeling like a bit of a knob and some things just being so obvious that you should have realized it anyway to just happen to you and then you will never do it again because you remember exactly what happened and how you felt about it and just how silly the whole thing was that you just never do it again and that can go for things like uh, just talking on the radio and things like that so. so I've had a great year it's been really fun and I've learned a few things and with experience will come more greater challenges and adventures in 2019 and I really can't wait to bring you all with me hopefully we're going to be doing a lot more different type of aviation related things so hopefully more helicopter stuff because I really enjoy that you'll definitely be coming up with me in all my flying videos and hopefully I'll be doing some product reviews as well. So upcoming very soon will be my what's in my pilot bag, my recommendations for the best knee board, and there will be what to expect in a check flight, and a whole bunch of new videos coming up soon. So I really hope you stay tuned. If you haven't already, it'd be great if you consider subscribing to my channel. Um, stay connected in the comments as well so I'd love to hear your experiences what you're going to do in the future um, let's just get in touch you know let's make a bit of a community here on YouTube and I really can't wait for you all to join me in 2019 thanks for watching